In 1892, Everton President John Holding found himself on the losing side of a bitter internal squabble. Holding was also the Anfield landlord, and had created friction by trying to capitalise on the club's early success through a series of rent increases. The effect, eventually, was a split. He would keep Anfield, but the other board members, the team, its identity and history, would flee across Stanley Park to Walton. He needed a team to play in his empty ground, and in June 1892, Liverpool Football Club was born. They entered the first division for the first time in just their third year of existence, and despite a quick, brutal relegation, they had rebounded successfully enough to win the title by their ninth year. The preeminent figure of that period was Alex Raisberg. He made 312 appearances between 1898 and 1909, and captained Tom Watson's side to both of their first two Football League championships. But Raisbeck was not the only decisive factor in that first success. Watson's arrival from Sunderland in 1896 was hugely significant, and the excellent recruitment he oversaw was also pivotal. The signing of centre-forward Sam Raybould in January 1900, and the 128 goals in 228 appearances he would score, was also of tremendous value. But Raisbeck captained that side, framing his role within the era, and he remained between 1904 and 1906 too, when Liverpool rebounded from relegation in 1904 to win their second league championship. In the final 10 games of the 1900-01 season, they conceded just twice on the way to overhauling Sunderland and capturing that maiden title. Clearly, to have played centre-half for that team is to be deserving of immortality. He was born in 1878 in Wollaston, a Scottish village south of Falkirk. When Watson was constructing his first great Liverpool side, having already architected Sunderland's famed team of all the talents, he'd followed conventional thinking. Managers could mine brawn from England, but for craft and culture, they'd head to Scotland. The DNA of English players was perceived corrupted by the rough-and-tumble variant of the game played in public schools, and it's not a coincidence that ahead of the 1898 season, Liverpool recruited heavily from beyond Hadrian's Wall. George Allen, Hugh Morgan, Tom Robertson and John Walker would all move south to Anfield that summer, and Raisbeck, then just 20, would also join from Hibernian for £350, having spent part of the previous season on a short-term contract at Stoke City. At the end of the 19th century, and for many decades after, players would often be cherished for their physical characteristics. For Raisbeck and his contemporaries, the literature of the day reflected that, focusing principally on their physical proportions rather than skill or effect. Raisbeck was a centre-half, from match reports, not a particularly static one either. While there are plenty of descriptions of his rugged defending, often he's portrayed as a roaming type, exerting influence up and down the pitch. Physically, he was also a spectacle. The average height of a man in 1900 was just under 5 foot 6, and Raisbeck stood at a towering 5 foot 9 and a hefty 13 stone. Not quite a giant of his day, but certainly one of the more physically imposing players of the time. For most of the next half century, football writing seemed to retain its fascination with size and strength. Long before the intellectualisation of the sport and the dawn of disproportionate analysis, players were treated with wonder. The very best were observed almost as a super species, capable of all sorts of unlikely feats, even as late as the 1950s, the early career of Duncan Edwards was and remained subject of almost Bunyan-like myth. Like Edwards, and in accordance with geographical cliché, Raisbeck was also a cultured footballer. Many celebrations of his career talk as much about his grace as they do his grit, and his balance as well as his bulk. It's still hard to imagine what he would have looked like carrying the ball forwards, or just how powerful his tackling was, but it provides enough of an outline. He was Liverpool's granite centre. But Raisbeck was both fulcrum and figurehead. In The Anatomy of Liverpool, A History in Ten Games, Jonathan Wilson describes the chasing down of Sunderland as being emblematic of the restless spirit which would come to form part of the club's long-term identity. It had been the kind of late-season charge which would define Liverpool during their golden era of the 1970s and early 1980s. A template had been forged. It's a romantic angle, but it's hard to dispute. Liverpool do remain intertwined with the notion of dragging the iron from the fire and snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. The run to the 1986 First Division title and the pipping of Everton, for instance, Steven Gerrard's FA Cup final goal against West Ham, or most famously, the stirring comeback in Istanbul. The symmetry is too seductive to ignore, and it's easy to trace those roots back to Raisbeck and that first improbable triumph. From Shankly and Souness to Dolgleish, Paisley and Gerrard, Liverpool's eras have always been partly defined by personalities, 
Perhaps that too is templated and can be traced back to Raysbeck, the kind of towering magnetic presence which the club and its supporters have always flocked towards. He was both talisman and icon, the first in a long line that would follow. <laughs>